So throughout this video, I have used blue numbers to label the different sections of the navigation menu. So this should allow you to skip to the relevant sections of the video if you look out for the blue numbers. So we're starting off on the home page, and this is what you will see when you log in. The first block on the home page contains helpful links that take you to more information about my studies, as well as where to get help and support and how to give us feedback. The second block contains helpful links for staff, including staff central, staff email, Unicard top up and a link to the online library. Moving on to the second page on the navigation menu, this will have your name on it. This is your profile page and on your profile page, there is some basic information about you. And there are three key things that you can do on this page. You can update your profile image or your avatar. You can update your global notification settings and you can also add a connection to your cloud storage account, which at the University of Brighton is OneDrive. So let's have a look at updating our profile picture. The technical term for that is an avatar. We're going to press on that edit button and then that will bring up a tray on the right hand side. Underneath the tray, you'll see an option to upload a new profile picture. So you're going to select that option and that will open up a file browser on your computer and allow you to find a image file on your computer desktop or in your files, wherever you've put it somewhere handy, hopefully. So once you've selected an image, you'll see a progress bar there. And once that's uploaded, it might look something like this. So just to be clear, I used Microsoft Paint to pre-prepare this image. I added on my pronouns and added a little bit of space underneath the image so it all fit into the circle nicely. So being able to add pronouns is not yet a function of my studies, but I used Microsoft Paint to edit my image so that they're displayed here. So let's move on to global notification settings, which we can edit on the bottom right hand side. So again, we've got an edit button that looks like a pencil. There we go. And if we select that, then a tray opens up on the right hand side and we have all of our ticky box options. So say I wanted to get a notification in my activity stream about new items that were to be marked, then I could tick that ticky box and go ahead and press save at the bottom. The next option is to manage your email notifications. So things like announcements still get emailed out to you if that's the option that was selected by the person sending the announcement. Um, but this is where you can take it a little bit further. So again, I have an edit button which looks like a pencil and I can then go through the list of checkboxes and select the things that I would like. So say I would like a new message each time a student sends a discussion message in my module then I could tick that and that will send me an email. I can decide if I get an email straight away up at the top there, or if I want to have a digest email once a day. So having chosen those ticky boxes, I would want to go down to the bottom and press save. The final option you will see under global notification settings is push notifications. Now I'm not going to go through this because this relates to the Blackboard instructor app and also the Blackboard app for students, neither of which we use at the University of Brighton because students have the My Brighton app. So it would all get very confusing if we tried to use those apps as well. Finally, you can add a connection to a cloud storage account. So to do that, you press on the add account option. Having pressed on that, that will open up a window and to link up your OneDrive for business account, which is what you have at the university, you need to select the OneDrive for business option. So there are two options. You need the OneDrive for business option. Um, you will see that there are other cloud storage providers listed on this page. These are not supported at the university and they do not meet our GDPR and data protection requirements. So please do not connect up any of these other services. Moving on to the activity stream, which we briefly mentioned in the notification settings there. This is an aggregation of all of the different information that's relevant to you across all your modules and courses. So you will see things here like uh, information about forthcoming due dates. You will see information about new submissions that are ready to mark if you've selected that option. 
um, you'll see information about new content that's been added potentially by your colleagues. And uh, again, if you want to stay on top of things, you can customize what you see on this page from this page directly as well. And I'll go through that in a second. Another helpful thing is that you've got a filter up on the top right hand side. So you can filter by marks and feedback related items if you want to and to further edit what you see on this page, which is actually a view of what we just went through on the profile page. We have a settings button up on the top right hand side. And from there, you can tick further items. So you might be on this page and go, oh, it's really good that I've got that reflective journal activity, but actually I would like to have a little bit more in depth information show up in my activity stream. So I'm gonna tick the journal activity option and I'm gonna press save on that. And now you'll actually see a bit more information. In this case, it's showing me a, a student's journal entry. So I get a direct link through to a student's journal entry because I turned on that option. The next page on the navigation menu is my course and modules. So this is where you find all of your module areas which you're currently teaching on. So you can see 2021, 22 is listed for me here. You can add specific modules to your favorites. So if you'd like to have them really quick to access in their own category at the top, all you have to do is press the star on the far right hand side of the module listing and that will add it to your favorites. So once you have some favorites, you'll get this category at the top. And if you wanted to remove this from your favorites, you just press the star again. So there's two different views for your My Course and Modules page. You can have grid view or list view. So we were just in list view. That's what this looks like. If we want to move to grid view, we press this button on the top left hand side. So the difference with grid view is each of the module areas gets an image that represents it. These images are sort of applied by default. So if you don't like the image that's on there and you want to add your own custom image, you can do that from the three dots on the right hand side here. So if you press on the three dots, you can press on the option to edit course image. And from there you can add a new image. So if you press on the add a new image button again, it will bring up a file browser so you can upload something from your computer. Just a key point I would make here is that most of us are going to be still working on what's called original courses for the time being. So that's how my studies looks for right now. Um, if you add an image which is taller than 300 pixels, as it's specified here, it will really make things on your front dashboard page look very strange. So if you are going to add an image, please make sure that you resize it and maybe use a piece of software like Microsoft Paint first to get it to 300 pixels high. If you need help with this, please contact your learning technologist. So having done that, this is what it would look like. I've added my own image, which I've resized. I'm going to press save and then that would get applied to my module on the grid view there. Now I want to return back to list view to show you another thing. So we're going to do that. So in list view, just so that you can tell these things apart, some people are going to have original courses, which is the version of my studies we're on right now. And some people are going to have ultra courses. And how do I tell them apart? Well, um, original courses have a clear label on them, as I've highlighted with the purple area here. Um, the other thing is that an ultra course will have a colorful annotation on the left there. So you can see there's a blue section on the left of the listing there. So moving on, we have also got an option, of course, to go back in time. So if we need to go back to modules from previous years, we do that with this arrow on the left hand side of the My Course and Module page. That will take us back to the previous academic year. And from that previous academic year page, there's a helpful drop down menu in the middle of the page, which lets you select earlier academic years if you need to. So I'm now going to go back to my current course and module list. And a couple of other really nice features on this page are that we can now filter. So we can filter by courses and modules that I am an instructor on that I teach. Um, but you can also search your modules using the search box on the left there um, by module code or title. And this is something we've all wanted for a really long time. So hopefully that will make things easier for you. If I need to find courses and modules which I don't teach on that I'm not enrolled on, 
I need to go up to the course catalogue on the top right hand side there. Now in the course catalogue I can type in the name or the module code for a module and that will bring up the search options and then if I press go the list will show below. So this is not too dissimilar from what we had before, you just go to a different place to find it. Moving on to organisations. Organisations are not something we're using at the University of Brighton right now, so I won't be covering those in this video. So the next page on the navigation menu is the calendar. And this is helpful because it will show you information about upcoming due dates and information related to assessments. Um, you can filter it by schedule view, which it's in right now, or by due dates. So if you want to see a list of due dates for different assignments, that will be there. And just to be clear, it is actually showing uh, my studies assignments and Turnitin assignments on here. So the top one there is a Turnitin assignment. The next one down is a my studies assignment. We can also change the calendar settings using the settings button on the top right hand side there. So if we go into the settings button, that will give us a list of the modules that we have and we can turn off any modules that we would prefer not to have on our calendar. We can also add events on the calendar and you've got kind of three key options which are available from the plus button or the add button which is up on the top right hand side there. So we've got add event, which I'll go through in a moment. We've got edit schedule and we've got office hours. Now the key thing with all of these is not to replicate information that students receive through the timetabling system. Um, so edit schedule I'd steer clear of because it's very much like a timetabling tool. Um, add office hours is fine and you can do that either globally or for individual modules, but it doesn't have any kind of schedule features with it. So students can't sign up for a slot to meet with you during your office hours. So it is of limited use, I believe. So let's go through adding an event and say you've got an event like a field trip that you want to add to the calendar just to highlight that to students. So you type in the name of the event at the top in this tray that's come up and then a little bit further down you've got a place to actually add which module area you want to attach this calendar event to so I've attached it to EV700 which is one of my modules I specify a start and end time and then I've specified a location we've got description down at the bottom here and I've just explained where students can find out more information about this field trip event and then I'd go ahead and press save and that will be on my calendar we're now going to move on to the Ultra Messages page on the navigation menu. This is only available to people who are in the Ultra Pilot, people who are, have Ultra modules. So you don't need to worry about this if that does not apply to you. Um, if you have an Ultra message, you will see a number appear next to the envelope. So you can see there's the envelope icon on the left of the item on the menu there, and that will show a number in it. Um, and then if I scroll down the page, I will see which modules are. So you can see that that is a, an ultra module because it has a blue bar next to it and it also has an unread message. So to read my message, I press on the title of the module and then in order to mark this message as read, I need to press on it and that will open this tray on the right hand side and I can't actually reply to this at the moment so the only people who are going to be sending messages in ultra modules are staff members students can't send messages and no one can reply to these messages um, the messages tool is a replacement for email in ultra modules for everyone else just keep using the email tools as you usually would Next up, we have the marks and feedback page in the navigation menu. This shows an aggregation of all your courses and modules. So it might be a little bit confusing because you can see it's showing course areas here, um, which is not generally where we go and mark things. What I would like to just highlight to you is that for Turnitin assignments, it might not show you the most accurate information here because anonymous Turnitin submission points don't transfer any information to the My Studies Grade Center or Grade Book in Ultra until the point of the post date. So it might say here nothing to mark, but in fact if we had a number of submissions there could be there could be things to mark and it's just not showing up here because this is 
about what's coming from the grade centre, the information coming from the grade centre. So our key advice is always to go to your modules themselves and particularly with Turnitin, you'd still be going to the same place, course tools, Turnitin assignments and looking at the list of submissions that you've got from students there. Penultimately, we have the tools page in the navigation menu. We're not using this at the moment and we're not promoting it to academic staff, so I won't be covering it in this particular video. And finally, after we've finished doing our work in my studies, we do need to make sure we sign out. So this is where the sign out button can now be found and you would press on that and that would completely log you out of the system. So thank you for watching this video. As always, if you need assistance, please be in contact with the Information Services Service Desk and your learning technologist. And uh, yeah, hope you found it helpful.